Tomorrow marks the 20th anniversary of the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City. Our next guest says that in the 20 years since 9-11, national security has become a justification for surveillance and the exercise of police power at home. Officials have used the September 11th attacks to justify a number of human rights and civil liberties violations, as well as spending large amounts of money on surveillance techniques, which have moved from foreign battlefields to local neighborhoods. The fear of terrorism is used to justify surveillance and over-policing of black, brown, and Muslim American communities. Police have also used the Patriot Act, passed just 45 days after the September 11th attacks, and 9-11 technology and rules to spy on this year's past racial justice protests. Here to help us unpack all of this is Jennifer Granick, Surveillance and Cybersecurity Counsel for the ACLU Speech, Privacy, and Technology Project. Uh, thanks for coming on tonight, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. The U.S. Congress passed the Patriot Act 45 days after the September 11th attacks. What powers did that le legislation give to the federal government under the guise of fighting terrorism, and how has it been used, especially against communities of color? Yeah, so the Patriot Act weakened privacy rules that were in place, um, and those uh, just it was justified by a national security need, but those uh, less protective rules applied to um, surveillance that took place inside the United States and targeting um, people who live here, citizens and um, legal residents as well. So, uh, and then, you know, after, even with the uh, lower privacy standards of the Patriot Act, the Bush administration violated the law as it then existed to do even more surveillance at a mass level. So what we saw was, um, the government collecting information about everybody that Americans called and also doing warrantless surveillance of uh, our international conversations. So, you know, bulk surveillance um, and a much easier path towards um, basically towards spying on people. Uh, what are the um, what are some of the surveillance technologies that that both the federal government and police departments use to monitor black liberation movements? Yeah, you know, the, one of the things about 9-11 and the Patriot Act is that a lot more money was spent on surveillance technologies. And this was purportedly for the battlefield. So face recognition, drones, devices that track cell phones, um, you know, even very familiar technology like tanks. Um, but what we then saw was that once this technology was built, it was imported into the United States for regular policing. Um, and of course, we know that regular policing inside the United States um, can be racist. And we saw that, you know, technology that was for run of the mill crimes has also been used to surveil protesters um, who aren't committing a crime at all. So we've seen facial recognition and these um, mm -hmm. cell phone trackers deployed against Black Lives Matter protesters, um, you know, during the uh, protests of the murder of George Floyd. Um, you know, drone um, and cameras for aerial surveillance, which have been deployed um, over neighborhoods in uh, cities like Baltimore. Just this real uh, redeployment of military technology into the United States for monitoring protests as well as for just run of the mill, low level crimes. Jennifer, can you talk about um, how programs apparently designed to um, counter? terrorism work to identify violence prone people in advance and why that's both inherently subject to bias and of course impossible? Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of efforts by, you know, the New York Police Department and other police departments to develop some kind of program to identify who's going to be violent um, ahead of time. And these efforts are inherently racist. We've seen um, classification of people who are protesting um, police killing of black Americans as black identity extremists. Some of the documents that we've received in Freedom of Information Act requests show that um, uh, American black Muslims are considered a suspicious category. Um, and the police departments ha and the FBI have deployed informants to um, infiltrate communities, black and brown and Muslim communities, and to basically collect information 
Um, but the information is on things like people's political beliefs or their religious associations. And, you know, we know that there's no way that you can protect violence, um, and, you know, especially based on those kinds of things where it's legitimate opinions that people may hold. So, you know, mm -hmm. inherent in a police department making those decisions is a prejudice about religion, about race, about political beliefs, and what is and what isn't legitimate. And we know that those assessments by, um, you know, police departments and by elites are, are biased and skewed. How broad is the scope of, of people caught up in the surveillance net? I mean, how worried should people be that the federal government is tapping their phone without their knowledge, for instance? Yeah, I don't think we have to be particularly worried about uh, our phones being tapped without our knowledge. I think the type of surveillance, bulk surveillance that happens is like when we're communicating with people overseas. And if the people overseas are a matter of, you know, some kind of foreign intelligence interest, then there are, uh, the law does allow for those communications to be tapped without a warrant. Um, I think we do see a lot of collection of information about our online activities um, that's happening. I think we've seen a lot of uh, lo disturbing location tracking where police have asked uh service providers to um, t say, like, I did help them identify people who are at a particular place for at a particular time, for example, during a protest. And um, so I think those are the kinds of surveillance that happen without enough judicial oversight um, that we really need to be concerned with. Jennifer Granick, Surveillance and Cybersecurity Council for the ACLU Speech, Privacy and Technology Project. Thanks again for your time and expertise. Here's another reminder that tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern, BNC will have live coverage of the September 11th commemoration ceremony hosted by Dale Walters and Naira Hawk. 9-11, 20 years later, tomorrow morning at 8, only on BNC.